Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Monday. I hope you guys are doing good today. So we got some more Lizzo tea slash Lizzo drama coming down the pipeline. So this entire situation is crazy, but before I get started, how come I was today years old when I found out that Lizzo's username on Instagram is Lizzo B. Eaton? I literally thought it was Lizzo Beaton this whole time, meaning, because you know she's always dancing, so I assumed it had to do with, like, you know, Lizzo dancing to the beat, so I thought it was Lizzo beating, like, you know, beating the beat, dancing to the beat, child, it's Lizzo B. Eaton. Girl, all right. Thank y'all to those who pointed that out to me because I I always thought it was Lizzo beating, but it's Lizzo be eating on Instagram. <laughs> I'm like, damn, okay, all right, we get it, we get it. You you don't like to miss any meals, ma'am. All right, cool. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm not going to say I believe every single accusation that's coming out about Lizzo because some of the dancers are giving me, you know, clout chasing energy, are giving me, you know, they're mad that they were fired and there's no checks coming in. You know, the checks aren't checking like they used to. So, you know, you got all these reality TV show stars coming together, filing lawsuits, going after conglomerates and people. So, you know, I'm going to wait for a lot of that stuff to play out in court. But I do think Lizzo's a big old freak and that she did have people, you know what I'm saying, eating bananas and stuff like that out, out, out them strippers' coochies. I do believe that, okay? Nasty bitch. But with that being said, as we all know, Lizzo, you know, Lizzo's got a man. Okay, like Shantae, honey. And Lizzo hit the red carpet. She had confirmed it back on April 18, 2022 on the Andy Cohen show where, you know, he was asking because she was caught, you know, paparazzi. They were stalking her and stuff. And they took pictures of her and her boyfriend. And then she made her red carpet debut with him. His name is Mike Wright. And so they made their red carpet debut on June of 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and play this little clip of her and Andy talking about her and her man child. Check this out. Where are you living full time now, L.A.? I'm living full time in L.A. You were photographed in L.A. in February at Craig's with a mystery man. Are you guys still together? <laughs> oh, whoa. Tom. <laughs> Yeah, whatever, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Good. whatever. Whatever, yeah. Is that hard? What? Is it hard to be super fam to be you and dating a guy? No, you're not going to date a unless you date Harry Styles. And if you did, I would love to hear more about that. But unless you date someone, you know, there's going to be a disparity. You're Lizzo, huge superstar, and this person is whoever that person is. Is that hard being the that that um, in a relationship? Mm, if you have the right person, no. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right, so you guys just heard that clip. And like I said, you know, when I first saw her with her man, I remember I made the blogs, and I thought they were a really cute couple. He looks handsome. She looks happy. And you know what I'm saying? I didn't really know what all he did, but okay, she got a man. And she's been with him now. We're now in 2023, so she's been with him for a while. Well, now... Mike Wright's ex-girlfriend of 10 years is coming out and her name is Brooklyn Elizabeth Brown and she took to TikTok to basically tell her side of the story about how she met Lizzo and Lizzo was not nice to her, was very funny acting and I guess the whole time Lizzo was plotting on her man because Lizzo took her man but again, you know, you can't take somebody who wants to be took, okay? So her man was willing to be taken and so she's coming out talking about this. She's very hurt. And she's saying that, you know, all of these allegations that are coming out against Lizzo, um, it's basically, you know, showing that she's not the person that she portrays herself to be. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this TikTok, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I first met Lizzo late 2016, 2017 ish. She and my boyfriend were co hosting a show on MTV called Wonderland. And no, she wasn't very nice. She wasn't very nice to me. I knew she didn't like me, but the people around her were nice. Like her sister seemed nice. And I kind of ignored it because I felt like, well, 
you know, she's already like in the celebrity scene or whatever. So she probably just feels like she has better things to do than talk to me. And I just noticed that like even when we were just out to eat or at the beach or something, she still wasn't very nice to me. And it wasn't like a, a production thing like, oh, she's just really busy or whatever. She just didn't like me. She didn't say anything that was mean, but she was really like standoffish or like wouldn't talk to me. You know, like when I talked to her, it was kind of like, oh, okay, like get the fuck away from me. I don't want to talk to you. So yeah, I eventually found out that she and my boyfriend has something going on, ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and um, that was that. I left the relationship. I mean, yeah, it was it was heartbreaking. I mean, I was with him for 10 years. I supported him through everything. And um, when he finally got a big break, he left me for Lizzo. <laughs> it was really hard for my mental health. I, I went through a really difficult period of time trying to be okay with this because it wasn't just like, oh, I broke up with my boyfriend. It was like, oh, I broke up with my boyfriend and he left me for a person who wasn't very nice to me and turned out to be like after the fact, after we broke up, she became a Grammy award winning celebrity and everybody in the world loves her and her message is like love and light and positivity after knowing how she treated me. But I wasn't able to, I didn't want to say anything because it made me sound like a whiny little baby or something. So I didn't, I didn't broadcast that that was something that happened to me. Or I, when I did talk about it, I never named her because I just didn't feel like I would be supported or people would care, you know, like people loved her. So why would I, why would I try to like drag her name or whatever? So I just silently went through something really big and really hard. It was like my fight or flight response was triggered every time I heard her song on the radio or like if I went to the movies and like her song was in the trailer. It was so difficult and I cried for so long and I felt so depressed and like I was in a really bad spot for years because of how this happened and I know it wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault. It was his fault. It was the way he handled it. She has no responsibility to me. But I think they could have both been a little more kind in the way that they chose to um, to get together. You know, like he could have broken up with me or she could have maybe suggested that he break up with me before they started something. Because the text messages were something that I'll never be able to not see in my head. I think I'm feeling emotional right now because this is the first time I've ever been able to freely speak on it. And feel like people will hear what I'm saying and not just like come at me for saying something about somebody that they really like. And it feels like this validation. <laughs> and I, I try to be a good person, you know, I try to let things go, forgive, you know, just move on. But some things just stick with you until, until it gets lifted off of your spirit. And I feel like this is a moment where it's gotten lifted off of my spirit that she's not everything that she's been saying she is. And I've known that for a long time. But I've tried to, I tried to let it go. But now that is coming to light, who she really is and how she really operates, it's just like vindication. It's like what I went through was real and I don't have to be quiet about it anymore. I don't have to be embarrassed about it anymore. It's true, it's true. I've seen it, it's real. And now I can like put these feelings aside and just like really move on. I guess I never really thought I needed that, but I did. <laughs> I'm realizing that I did. But the biggest takeaway is just be kind. Build your character and be kind. Operate from a place of love. Love yourself. And when you truly love yourself, that will, that will extend itself to other people. Be the same person outside as you are in privacy behind closed doors. Don't try to build yourself up in a fake persona just because people say the right things or put on the public displays of humanitarianism or i care about you and you know like people love hearing those things but what we're really not looking at is how people actually live their lives and it's okay to get those motivational moments or those inspirational uh, messages from people take the message apply it to yourself you're smart. You know what's right and what's true for you. So take those things and let them make you a better person, but don't ever idolize messengers. Do not ever idolize messengers. 
you you do it for yourself you figure those things out for yourself you set your course you set your path you do the things that you believe in and don't think that just because someone else is saying it that they're better than you or anything like that we're all human don't forget that all right so you guys just heard what brooklyn had to say about the situation and you can tell even though they've been separated for a while that she's still genuinely hurt by this and it's gotten some mixed reactions. Some people are, you know, are clowning her and saying, oh, you're just mad because a black woman, you know, took your man. You know, you were his preference or so you thought. I see a lot of people throwing a lot of digs at her. But honestly, this is nothing new. And any woman can go through this regardless of your skin tone, your ethnicity, your race, things like that. And to me, what I'm getting is that, again, a case of somebody who might have been bullied looked over, you know, maybe men weren't checking for her because of her larger frame. Now, Lizzo's a very beautiful woman. I've said this time and time again. As far as her face, she has a beautiful face, very asymmetrical, her eyes, everything. She's a very, very beautiful woman. Um, but I think because of her size, you have a segment of men who don't like women, you know, who are larger. That's just fact, right? Doesn't make it right or wrong. It's people's preferences. You know, just like a lot of women do not prefer guys who are short. A lot of women will not talk to a guy under six foot. <laughs> okay, let's keep that real, child. Okay? <laughs> we like them tall. So now, anyways, um, so I think this is a case where Lizzo, you know, she started you know, having feelings for the guy. The guy was obviously feeling her as well. And for her, it's a notch on her belt. Like, I'm about to, you know, take your man. You know, I'm a big girl. I'm a black woman. You know, you're racially ambiguous, whatever. You know, uh, what they be saying, fit, fun, and friendly. You know, you know the triple Fs that these guys love to use on YouTube. You know, you're fit, fun, and friendly, but I can take your man, bitch. And I think this is a case of that, is that, you know, this was a notch on Lizzo's belt. You know, sometimes people who have been bullied and picked on they then become, you know, the bully, you know, the way she was treating her, very standoffish, very cold, because now she's Lizzo, now she's 100% that bitch, you know. So I think that there is some truth to what this girl is saying, but I like the fact, too, though, that she did acknowledge that she can't just blame Lizzo because it takes two to tango. So while it's easier to attack the woman and be mad at the woman, you also have to hold this man accountable. And this is why, like I always say, you know, you have to be careful holding down some men. You know, all this, he's a struggling comedian, struggling actor, I'm paying the bills, I'm believing in his hopes and dreams and goals. And then as soon as he found a better opportunity, he bounced. So again, you have to make sure that you guys are getting into these relationships where you all are equally yoked, you know, and it sounded like she was really holding him down. He was not a big star at all. But now his name is ringing bells because of him dating Lizzo. And, you know, a lot of men will pull a stunt just like a lot of females do. If a female sees a better opportunity, a guy with more money, a guy who's handling his business, then the person that she's with now, she's going to bounce. That's how a lot of women get down. Not all, but some do. And so some men are the same way. I'm with this chick. Yeah, you're cool, but this is Lizzo. She might be bigger, but, you know, her star power is way bigger, and it can help me in the long run. So, again, you have to be careful when dealing with men like that or women like that. So I feel bad for her. She's clearly still hurt. But um, I can see this being factual because women do this all the time. I've said this time and time again. There's no real sisterhood. People talk all this sisterhood shit, but there's no real sisterhood. Okay, a lot of women will know that a woman has a man or that's her husband. And if there's something in it for them, they have no problem being the side chick or, you know, trying to take that man or go after another woman's man because there's no real sisterhood. Everybody's out for self, unfortunately. That's the world that we're living in. But I always feel like this. Karma is real. So maybe he's enjoying the limelight now and, you know, he's enjoying the red carpet treatment. But you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. See, a lot of times we look at photos and, you know, especially when we're the ones who are hurt and we've been through things with, with men and things like that. And we assume like, oh, well, everything is perfect. They've moved on. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. 
For all you know, she could be talking to him crazy, emasculating him. Not saying that that's what's happening, but you just never know. They could have a good relationship behind the scenes. They could be lovey-dovey 24-7. You don't know. But don't always assume that because somebody moved on, they're living their best life. Sometimes people think that the grass is greener on the other side, and they find out that that grass has a bunch of bald patches, dry patches, and a bunch of other mess in there, okay? Look at the whole Johnny Depp situation. He thought the grass was green on the other side. He was able to pull Amber Heard. She was like 20-something years younger than him, younger than his baby mama that he refused to marry. And what happened? Amber Heard literally damn near ruined that man's career. Okay? So the grass is not always green on the other side, and people need to understand and remember that. So that was the situation going on with Miss Brooklyn Brown. But now on top of the whole Brooklyn Brown situation, there's another young woman who's also blasting Lizzo as well. Now, this young woman is an independent artist, and her name is El Biaz. And basically, she's speaking about her own experience with trying to work with Lizzo. She was a huge Lizzo fan. Um, she went to audition for Lizzo's show, The Big Girls. And so she was saying that when she wanted to, you know, go on to the show, she had family friends look over the contract because she herself is a singer and an entertainer. And so her lawyers looked over the contract and they're like, this is not a good contract. Once you go on this reality TV show, they own everything, your likeness, your ideas, your image. And this can really affect you if you're trying to be, you know, a solo independent star. So she decided she didn't want to go through and sign the contract that she was advised to sign by production. And so they had ended up basically saying that if you're not going to sign the contract, you can't move forward. But while they were talking and negotiating, you know, she had sent Lizzo's people's her videos and, you know, just different concepts. And so all of a sudden, after she wasn't allowed to be on the show, she saw her concepts being performed by Lizzo. So we're going to go ahead and listen to what Elle had to say on TikTok. Y'all go ahead and check this out. This is a story I never intended to tell because I'm the biggest Lizzo fan. I worship the ground that she walked on. She made me feel like there was representation in the music industry that I was yearning for for so long. But it's been two years now and I've held this in for so long and I feel like I just want to get it off my chest with everything else coming out right now in the media. And you can take whatever I say and make your own decision on it. I'm just going to tell you the facts and my story. I was in the casting process for Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girl season one. And I was in the finals. I got all the way through the stages. It was a lot. There was many steps. You had to do your dance audition videos. You had to send them your whole life story. You met with Lizzo's team. I did a whole interview with them too. And it was an amazing journey. And I was so excited when they presented me with the final agreement and they were planning my flights. Upon getting the agreement, I read through it with my family. I have some blurs on my family and they highly advised that I do not sign that agreement. It basically wanted to own you. It wanted to have your life story for eternity. It wanted to own any the rights of anything that you put out, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm an independent music artist, so I was highly advised not to sign it. We did end up giving them some red lines and unfortunately they gave me a call and told me that all the other girls were signing this agreement and they could not give me special treatment by applying my red lines and that they wouldn't be able to move forward with me so it was a really really hard call for me i was on the floor sobbing i thought that that was like my big break and i just ruined it by not signing that agreement during the process of when i sent everything over to the audition team and lizzo's team i sent two of my music videos one's called better with you and one is for my song called paint me and they're both original works of mine so in this clip from my video better with you i'm in a detention classroom and i turn this classroom into a disco we're in the 1970s here yes we got the disco ball, I got my dancers behind me, we are doing our thing, you get the vibes here. Then Lizzo drops about damn time, we are in a classroom, this is April 2022, chalkboard that she turns into a disco, and of course she has a way bigger budget than me. Disco ball, we are in the 70s, and of course when I saw this, I was just a little bit confused. I thought maybe it's just a coincidence, but then something else happened, so I'm going to go to part two, sorry guys. Okay, so this is my part two. Then Lizzo was dropping her new album, and on her new album, there was a song called Naked. This is my body positive song, Paint Me, from 2020. It's inspired by Titanic, and it's about your body being a beautiful work of art, especially when it's naked. And I projected all these paintings onto my body to show that and portray it in the video. 
and this video is probably one of my favorite pieces of art I have ever, ever made, so it means a lot to me. And I sent this to Lizzo's team for review. And Lizzo dropped Naked in 2022 on her new album, and when she performs it live on tour, she wears a nude bodysuit and projects paintings onto her body. Our songs also have very similar concepts and meaning, like they're in different fonts. And the reason I found out that she was doing this on tour was because my friend sent it to me and was like, yo, is this like paint me? And I was just like, that is so weird. So a lot of weird coincidences. So those are my two pieces of art that I put out in 2020 and 2021 that I sent to Lizzo's team to consider me for her show and to see my artistry being a body positive artist. And that is what she put out in 2022. So those are my facts and that is my story. And I'm just so glad to be able to share that now. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So it was very interesting. You know, this wasn't one concept, but two. And especially with Lizzo wearing the nude body garment and then having like the, you know, the videos and the pictures splashed on her. You know, it's really unfortunate, but, you know, this happens all the time in the industry. And I'm not even going to say that Lizzo herself you know, stole this woman's idea per se, because what people don't understand is that a lot of these celebrities have teams, right? Because Lizzo can't be everywhere at once. She has to write music, play her flute, you know, do 50 million things. So a lot of times they have these teams and they go through social media. They go through the trending topics. They read comment sections. They watch YouTube videos that me and many commentators on YouTube make regarding different celebrities, different topics. And they take, you know. So I would not be surprised if it wasn't even just Lizzo but her team. You know, once this woman sent them the concept, they pitched it to Lizzo. Lizzo may not have any idea that it came from Elle, but her team did. And then, you know, Lizzo performed it and took these concepts. And it could have very well been Lizzo herself because, again, let's not forget, um, I don't believe in coincidences. Remember, back in 2019, Lizzo was trying to trademark the phase 100% that bitch. And she wanted to put it on merch lines and things like that. Because remember back in 2019, I did a video about her being accused of plagiarism um, for her song Truth Hurts. And it was another songwriter. They were trying to take her to court. Um, for that. And she was adamantly denying that. Um, I forget what all happened with the case, if it got thrown out or not. But I remember she was sued for that. But then in the midst of that lawsuit, um, she was also trying to trademark the phase 100% that bitch. People forget about that. And so that was from her song in 2017. She wanted to trademark it. And there was a young black woman, um, she's a musician as well. Her name is Mina Linus. And I remember her coming out, and this is what she said on Twitter. She was like, what I cannot get over is how brazen Lizzo and her team have been in ignoring my whole presence. They're doing it because they know I have no capital to address her. I'm just a poor black girl from London that don't have no dog in this fight. She wrote that back in 2019. Because if you guys don't know, she was the person on social media that first wrote, I did a DNA test and found out I'm 100% that bitch. So on February 25th of 2017, Linus wrote, I did a DNA test and found out I'm 100% that bitch. And then in September of that year, Truth Hurts came out featuring the same lyric. Now Linus's tweet went viral. So what was very interesting is that Linus had tweeted Lizzo and she says, now everyone believes that those were your words when in fact they were mine, my creativity, my wit, my comedy. Lizzo ended up responding back to her and Lizzo said, I wrote that song in June of 2017 and was inspired by a meme on Instagram that used that phase. I've never seen your viral tweet, but I'm glad it exists. Okay. So then, like I said, she was trying to trademark it to put it on, you know, clothing and, you know, stuff like that. And then that's when Mina came back and was blasting her again. Now, I don't know if the trademark went through. You know, I'm not wearing anything that says that. But, you know, if you can buy a top that says that, let me know in the comments. So, again, this is not the first time that Lizzo has been accused of taking from other creators, smaller creators, and not giving credit and stuff like that. And, again... You know, this is not just for Lizzo. This happens with a lot of big name celebrities. Let's keep it real. Y'all know I'm a Queen Bee fan. I'm a low key member of the Beehive, right? 
But how many times has Beyonce been attacked and called out for, you know, copying people's ideas, you know, um, people's concepts? Beyonce has been called out a lot of times, you know, so it's not just Lizzo, but this happens all the time in the industry. This is why you have to protect your dreams and you know, just your concepts. You have to get things copywritten, get things trademarked because, you know, the internet is free game. You know, people are lurking, people are watching, people are taking. And it's also sad because, you know, a lot of these companies and these conglomerates, they take a lot of ideas from social media. They take a lot of ideas from YouTube. And then all of a sudden you'll see a network show with the same YouTube name or you'll see a network show with the same YouTube concept. So it happens all the time. And um, it can be very, very frustrating because if you don't have a huge fan base or money or big backing, you know, you don't get the credit that you deserve, unfortunately. You know, I've gone through that time and time again, so I definitely understand the feeling. But, um, you know, again, it's not just Lizzo that does it. A lot of these celebs take. You know, how many times have rappers dropped music and then you'll see indie artists like, look, that was my beat. You know, that was my song. I came out with this concept first. Um, recently, Diddy was accused of that act bad. The, there was another girl that did the act bad song before Diddy and Carisha, and she was accusing them of stealing her song and her concept. So it happens a lot. And, you know, unfortunately with these networks as well, speaking on them, they want to put you in a slave contract. They want to, you know, take your likeness and, you know, the trade-off is your fame. So that's why people need to start being smart before going on reality television because that trade-off is not worth it. You know, they feel like, well, we're, the, we're behind the scenes, we're putting up the money, we're the ones filming and editing, and, you know, your trade-off is a small check, and then, you know, your fame, and you can use that fame to, you know, boost yourself up on social media, sell yourself to brands, sponsorships, and things like that. But, you know, once you fall out of popularity, your show's not on the air anymore, um, those brand deals stop coming. They slow down. And your likeness continues to be used in perpetuity. And that's what a lot of these reality TV show stars are now trying to sue and fight these networks for. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, you know, with this. I mean, neither one of these girls are involved in the lawsuit, of course. But I think this just goes to show another side of Lizzo. It's going to be very interesting to see if any more people come out against her and talk about her character and things like that. But I leave the conversation with my tea sippers. I want to know y'all's thoughts. I want to know what y'all think about this entire situation concerning Lizzo B-E-N. I got it now, tea sippers. It's Lizzo B-E-N, okay? Let me know your thoughts on both of these stories. Do you feel like Lizzo, you know, basically took her man and, you know, he also allowed himself to be taken? Let's keep that real. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Do you guys feel bad for her? Um, she's clearly still hurt. Or do you feel like she's clout chasing and looking for attention? And then how do you guys feel about L um, Baez? Do you feel like, you know, with her situation that her concept was definitely stolen, if not by Lizzo, at least by Lizzo's team? Or do you feel like she's reaching? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment, the like button. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.